grab it here. Thought we'd go through some of the um, basic programming language platforms that were available for the Omega. Take a little walk back in my history lane, so um, let's get started. So anyway, any links and stuff that I show, I'll put in the comments so you can um, get them there. But anyway, the first um, um, version of basic we're going to look at is the absolute first one that was made for the Amiga platform. And that was from uh, actually from a company called Metacom Co. And um, it was shipped with Amiga OS versions 1.0 and 1.1. So anyway, thanks to the Internet Archive, it's still available. Amiga Basic 1.0, and um, it actually has a quite a comprehensive manual covering all the functionality. So it's a positive, but um, let's have a, have a look at the actual actual Basic running in the emulator. So anyway, I set up a ah, I booted using a, um, a built-in the lowest level of Workbench version I could find. To um, boot up with it, oh, well, I think it was 1.0, and then um, as the second disc, I have the actual um, ABA6 disc. So let's look at that. And so here we have a basic. Now, the a basic disc in itself is a bootable disc, uh, so I actually booted it up. And then you get, uh, basically, you get in directly into the uh, command line interface or DOS uh, shell. But then when you try and run any basic, then it says that it says that there's not enough stack space. So I don't know if they actually dis actually they must have intended intended that you could boot the um, a basic disk and then just run the basic. But it, um, somehow the c configuration has been messed up over time or something. So. This is why I actually boot, boot up the um, system with a separate um, 1.0 uh, workbench, and then I just start a basic, basic from the basic disk, and, and that seems to run okay. Um, I mean, this this is considered to be one of the worst basic versions for the Amiga that exists, but um, it was from its time, like <laughs> 1985. So. You have to give it a bit of a break, and then, um, but I mean, the command set uh, is quite extensive. I mean, if you have any energy at all to look at the manual, just for the like, giggles and laughs, you'll see that it actually has quite a comprehensive um, uh, command set. And um, the way the this is a bit of a weird, uh, weird um, basic environment where it's it's no windowing or anything. Everything. No, but it's actually the. I think the pedigree is like comparing it to a, you know, a big twenty, uh, Commodore sixty four um, environment when it comes to the, the way you handle the, the basic editing. Maybe a bit worse. <laughs> but um, let's see if we can actually write a basic. So this is how you enter the uh, the lines, and um, if you want to list all the entry lines, right list, and then you get it. And if you want to go back and edit the line, and you use edit and then the line number, and um, then you um, can actually um, yeah, edit the line, and. Um, if you want to run it, then it's run. So let's just see how it works. And if you want to save it, 
Uh, this is actually very similar to um, older Commodore stuff, except for of course they use this, the Amiga disk system, so then you have to use the name of the disk to I actually have that file already in use. Or no, it doesn't seem to care. I have it in use. And then if you want to load, then it's um, load. And this is the strange thing then. I found out that then one needs to actually put the, the full with the extension, so I don't know. I haven't read the manual right now. This is just, uh, it's just the way I, mean, I could get it to work. So then it loads it. So I don't, you won't see any difference. And you don't need to use capitals to program and stuff. It's, so use, it can use both capitals and, or uppercase Um. Yeah. Oh, ah, it looks like it gives a header now since I actually loaded the. But anyway, as I said, the, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you're a fan of um, old, old Commodore style of um, programming basic, then this is actually it. And um, if, if you don't get upset using editors like V, then um, yeah. Yeah, it's still usable. But I, I wouldn't disregard it completely because of the, ca you know, if you if you actually need to do something on these very old workbench versions then this is this is available and it actually it actually does have a quite a uh, as I said the command set is quite extensive so I don't know I'll be able to make something that's useful so the next one on the list is um, something called Amiga Basics so this is was Commodore's own production and shipped pretty yeah, on, from Commodore on um, Amiga OS versions 1.1 and 2.1.3. So, and um, <laughs> yeah, lots of people don't like this, but um, it, um, I mean, it has its ben the benefit is that it actually is available all the time, so it's um, no need to install anything. And um, you last time rolls by this pretty much still works so um, it shouldn't be t totally disregarded so the um, there's actually a full manual available for this one and um, the other positive thing is that this actually in, a, in addition to uh, Microsoft producing literature for this um, there are actually quite a lot of old books of various kinds that have been written for uh, related to this basic. So, uh, from uh, again from that perspective, I wouldn't completely disregard Amiga Basic because it, it, it's one of the uh, yeah one of the ancient programs that has pretty uh, the, the most supporting. Uh, most amount of supporting uh, lots of third party as I said lots of third parties have written on different books on how to do things in, in the basic so let's have a look and see what it looks like in reality so a little bit more <laughs> modern if you want to call it that way but anyway workbench is just uh, 1.3 and the extras disk is also 1.3 so uh, both loaded at the same time, so we can just open up the extras. And I mean, uh, this was a side comment. I won't go into all the details, but it it, it does come with a bunch of um, um, like uh, demos and, and and stuff. So, oh, this Hello World is actually I created it earlier, so I'm not telling you, I can ignore that. <laughs> Start from scratch. So anyway, this is uh, yeah, slightly more 
mode and so now you actually have an output window and then you have the list window where you actually have a program. So let's do the um, same super simple one. Hello world. And um, of course, like with the previous basic, the do heap loads, but then I really want to keep the size of the video reasonable, so I'm going to stick to this extremely valuable, simple demo. So, let's start it. Mm -hmm. So here you can actually, you can right click and then you actually get access to the, the menu. So, so then you can just take run and start, and then it gives you hello world. And, um, if you want to see the listing window, then you just right click and you say Windows and you want to look at the list window. And um, if you want to save it, and then you go to Project, Save As, so. And still, this is not warning, I already have the whole world file saved. <laughs> I just wipes it off. <laughs> Those were the days. And um, if you want to load the project, then it's just to right click and open. And you have to actually remember what it's called. Just load it. So you see no fancy file selection dialogues. <laughs> that one. So the next product to look at is Amos and um, just to put it out there this is they've actually released into the, this whole thing into the public domain so this this used to be a uh, commercial product but it's, it's not that anymore and um, this platform was actually made also for the Atari ST was developed by a couple of French pe persons, a company called Europress Software in 1990. So, um, and it's also quite comprehensive. So again, um, <laughs> the Internet Archive to the rescue. So the, you can actually find the, and um, there are uh, different variants of the Amos um, system, but I'm, I'm focusing here on the one they call or a, like latest release and it's uh, it was a product called Amos Professional so you w you will find um, references if you search to I think it was like Amos Basic and, uh, and then there were a few different versions but um, as I said they, there's a full manual available um, just as a side mention I don't know how many people would be interested but this was actually a basic that um, had an associated compiler. So, I mean, usually BASIC is, is an interpreted language, so you have a, a runtime that reads bytecode and then does the actions, but this, this actually had an option to run a, a, a compiler. And um, what makes this uh, system interesting is this, this is also, well, one, Ah, in the back in the day one called a platformer so um, basically the idea with that is that you you, you should have lots of um, features and modules to be able to do lots of different things but then you also should have the full freedom to do whatever you want and then a combination of those two leads to a platform that is optimized on a low level to the nth degree and not always super stable. <laughs> um, there's a uh, quite a uh, community out there, I would say, that are still interested in using this. And um, I actually found, um, and, and as I said, all the links are in the description, but I found a site, uh, Omega store, that actually sells a um, Amos Archive CD, which actually contains, as you see, all the different 
variants of um, animals. So I thought that was nice. Uh, I mean, and it's not that super expensive. I think they deliver worldwide. Um, then I found a site um, where it's publicly distributed. All the discs are distributed. Um, uh, this was a site that has a ah, let's call it a distributional disc set of six discs, and then it has another distributional set of discs which has three discs. And um, this is due to the fact that uh, once upon a time Amos was actually released as a c like a cover disc series. Um, and, and then they had a more comprehensive version, um, which also includes like example sets and all kinds of other stuff. So, so you can also pick them up here if you like. And I mean, there are other sites that provide this. And as I said, um, stressing the fact that this is now public domain software, it, 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 even even if you have copyright and notices in the documentation and stuff, then it's um, it's a, it's actually been released by the um, copyright holders to the public domain. So let's have a look what it looks like. So what I'm using is I'm using the six disc set and disc one as the uh, primary ah, workbench disc on the LA. So anyway, here's what it looks like. And um, this had once upon a time, oh, a long time in history, it had a registration method where you, um, the first time you started it, before you could really use it, you you were ah, you ran a small setup, and then um, it, it would ask you for the registered user and registered number. And uh, quite often, when the when these um, uh, discs are shared, then um, it's already been um, registered to a user, and uh, that could be because uh, when they distributed it for on the magazine covers and stuff, they didn't. They um, didn't want to have to put the user through the hassle of, of installing it. But the installation process is described in the manual. Uh, but as I said, the, as far as I can see, the disc set, the six disc set, it's um, pre-registered. But it, as I said, the public domain software doesn't have any legal meaning any, anymore. Anyway, so this is um, the Amos is pretty much its own integrated environment, so it, uh, it, uh, yeah, it doesn't really follow the Amiga um, UI design features or anything else. <laughs> and um, it was actually one of the reasons why the Amos never continued down the line of Amiga or anywhere else, is that it was, it was too low-level hard-coded to a specific Amiga in, uh, architecture and implementation. It was impossible to uh, get it to move to anything else or upgrade. <laughs> but um, still, I mean, that's all retro software. It's it is totally usable in its own um, context. So let's um, start with our standard Hello World application. Now I am using an international keyboard with uh, Swedish layout, so there is a few glitches with the keyboard mappings. But the thing is that I think that ah, I think one could get that sorted out if one um, configured the workbench and, and stuff properly. So that I'm not going to blame the <laughs> the actual software for it right now. But I have to use the virtual keyboard to. Um, get those characters to appear correctly. Well, as I said, I think the other one could probably sort that out. So, and then if you want to run it, then you just run it. Said it has its little bit own interface concepts and stuff. And then we come back in here. Okay, well. hmm. I think 
it actually does that. When you when you create a program and you haven't saved it and then you run it, it actually I think it tries to run like hint that hey it might be a good idea to save. So, but um, if you want to um, save it, then you right click and then you see you've got a huge menu here with all the kinds of different options. But basically, the one you just want to save it, then you can just take save as. I'll skew the location. And this has like proper dialogues and stuff for file management and all kinds of different options for changing disks and stuff, so it's a bit more um, comprehensive than the other basics that I was showing when it comes to file handling. So if you want to load it, it's just to um, But as I said, there are yeah, lots of zillions of features, but it's very isolated into its own own packaged environment. So not for the faint-hearted, but there are many, many GitHub repositories where the source code is reported to be available. Now this is the closest I got to the actual original author. Seems to have the most complete set of source code, uh, utilities, uh, build compilers, everything packaged up into this. So I actually, it's a, the, 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 this other stuff than just um, just the source files. Um, I had a little look at it. Um, it's. Um, uh, partially broken. They've actually been using their own um, compiler to produce um, utilities to um, compile different or to do different create data files and stuff in the build process and, and they, don't <laughs> they don't work very well. Uh, yeah, just to decide, the, the whole build process is supposed to be uh, run on an Amiga. So you, you, know, you need uh, Amiga, yeah, run it on the Amiga. But anyway, not getting into too much. It's as I said, not for the faint. But if you um, if you um, share the Amos directory onto the emulator, then you actually have access to all the programs. Um, however, they're not. Uh, then you get the non-registered version, so the name and uh, code hasn't been entered. Um, it also has that some parts of it doesn't really seem to work. So this could be like uh, a snapshot of the next patch going out or something. So it's it's not necessarily a you know, stable release. There's there's a little bit of mis mixed documentation around here. But um, I put it here because the, 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 there are quite a few sites if you search for Amos, then they're like, oh, you just download the repository and uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I need to cut it shorter. It's uh, the, you can go this route also, but um, but there are issues, so um, you've been you you've been warned. So moving on, then we have a Blitz Basic, um, New Zealand based. So, um, an interesting product, mainly game orientated. So. Was the one know what it was like building games in those days? Then this is actually, yeah, relatively of interest. And um, there is actually a manual available, so a uh, link to that where you can pick that up from. So as you see, quite, yeah, quite comprehensive, 275 pages. <laughs> So this one has a, um, a GitHub page, uh, but the, the main in, uh, interest is this DMS folder here for those that just want to run it. So then you can actually pick up the um, 
Lich 2 DMS This this one here. So it's that first one that they're mostly interested in. Uh, for the emulator use. Also has source code and stuff. So you can actually boot the disk image that I showed you and um, then you get this kind of display. And we can um, open up the disk. It's, this loading time is completely fake because uh, you can um, in the emulator you can actually go and tweak things so it'll be pretty much instantaneous. But I think it's kind of for, <laughs> for old times sake kind of cool to keep the um, default speed. So anyway here we have the editor. And, um, let's try and make our hello world. And here one doesn't get the keyboard thing, so that's actually only a blitz basic, the one has that small glitch. Uh, I must say blitz basic, it, it um, does all kinds of weird glitch. <laughs> it's a bit glitchy. <laughs> So if you want the actual menu, then you have to like move the cursor up here, and you need to press on it, and then you need to pull it down so you actually get the uh, menu exposed here. And um, there was one small detail I missed out. This one, this Hello World needs to be it's a lot more complicated than the other ones. You actually need to put in this mouse weight statement here. <laughs> Anyway, let's run. So now when it runs it then it um, ends up in um, Is it Okay, I know. I clicked on the mouse. Size this one, so. Oh, but then the thing is that I've got it on this mouse weight, so as soon as I click on the mouse, then the, it closes the window. So, yeah, some minor, minor trickery, but uh, it works. And then if you want to um, save stuff, then it's just to say save. Oh yeah, then I was just uh, forgot to mention that when you uh, s store the 
these um, basic files. They're actually the um, bytecode versions. And that's um, uh, yeah, that's uh, very much true with uh, uh, pretty. I think it's pretty much all the basic versions that I've showed you. They store their f file source code files in binary formats, and no, none of them are text-based. Oh, uh, ah, minor detail. But anyway, so that's how um, it's basic works. So yeah, I hope you um, enjoyed this brief presentation of a few basics that are available. I mean, I if, if you do some research yourself, then uh, you, you will actually find out that there are lots of mo lots more basics and. Um, you know, with basic environments or compilers or interpreters, there's um, lots of different opinions about what is good and what's bad. It, and um, it's mostly a lot driven by, um, like, what are you, what do you want to do? So, you know, so for, from a what do you want to do perspective, then one basic is better than another. But um, these were, yeah, in their day, like, considered market leaders. Amiga died. <laughs> All the other computers died and the PCs took over. Uh, some of the technology of course migrated through the heads of people into um, new products in, in the PC world, but yeah, to a certain extent these just jumped off a cliff and died. Anyway, we, we still have access to them, um, run them in emulators or on the real machines. And, um, yeah some demos and stuff. See you in the next one and happy hacking. <laughs>